my thing on. Uh, I was just going to yell, but apparently I'll turn this thing on. Welcome to Sunday morning at the Grove Fort United Methodist Church. Uh, welcome to everybody here in person and all the people watching us online. Uh, we do have some announcements today. Um, confirmation classes are upcoming for those in seventh grade and older. If anyone uh, is interested in that, please contact uh, Pastor Jonathan. Uh, Lily and Faith Circle will be meeting on February 14th, Valentine's Day at uh, 1030 a.m. Um, at the Paddock Pub. Free Friday is uh, February 17th. So if you would like to help with that, if you could be here at 430 and uh, any donations of uh, food are appreciated. Ash Wednesday will be February 22nd at 7 p.m. and everyone is welcome. Uh, we always need items for the blessing box. So if you feel so moved, please feel free to come and drop those off uh, either in the church or in the uh, box outside. Um, our grief share group will be meeting uh, Thursday at 7 to 8.30. And uh, we are responsible for the food pantry in March, March 23rd and March 30th. So uh, if you are available to help with that, please contact uh, Andrew. His number is in the bulletin. And finally, the March and April upper rooms are available in the back of the uh, church. Uh, today, I'm very uh, happy to say that uh, it is Scout Sunday, so you will get a chance to give the Scouts a round of applause. <laughs> the scouts, the Boy Scouts meet here on Mondays, um, and the Cub Scouts also meet here. Are they still Tuesdays? Mondays and Tuesdays, okay. And... Uh, we are honored to have the Scout Honor Guard host our colors for us. Would the Scouts like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. And let me say again what an honor it is to have the Scouts here. You have been uh, scouting in Grove Fort. Uh, most of the time at this building for over 70 years. Is that right? So uh, they said it wouldn't last, and there it is. So with that, I'd like to ask you all to open your minds and soften your hearts and join us in worship.
Please join me in the call to worship, Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart, but to those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the Please join me in the congregational prayer. Jesus, Jesus the Christ, Christ, holy and blessed are you. When you walked on this earth, you taught us from the wellsprings of knowledge. When your disciples let you down, you continued to pour into them. When the time was right, your sacrifice allowed our sins to be forgiven. He prays this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, of course, is a special Sunday for us. As Brad already mentioned, it's Scout Sunday. You probably noticed that already, those online. Uh, we're just glad that you're with us to celebrate this day. We have had a long, outstanding relationship with the Scouts. They are our Scout troop. We love them to death. And I uh, do want to just take time to recognize them here today. And especially, I want to invite uh, Tina Doman. She's going to come up and share with us just a few words on behalf of the Scouts to us. <laughs> Don't panic. <coughs> okay. So first of all, um, the scouts, both the Cub Scout Pack 371, um, 3071, and our Scout Troop 71, um, appreciate all the help and support that your congregation has given us. Methodist uh, Church has been supporting scouts for over 100 years. And like Dr. Lewis said, we've been with you for you know, 70. Um, our troop has, well, our troop started in 1929. So we have been a continuous troop. We're one of the oldest ones in the council and our number is 71. Most of the scouts I'm dealing with in troops are 73 something. So we were one of the very first and we appreciate all your support. Um, I would like to say if you would indulge me a little bit, um, you know, scouts have had a rough couple years. The pandemic was not kind to us, but because of the uh, city of Groveport and because of this congregation, we were able to continue with meetings after Zoom and then at the park and then here at the church. Many scouts were serviced. Um, we really cannot thank you enough. Many, many troops folded, many packs folded, and they, they were just now coming back. We were continual, so we really appreciate that. 
Um, and then, of course, you know, we've, we've had some, some difficulties in the scouting units um, national-wise. We all know about that. So we continue to pray for the victims and give them the support that they need. But, okay, so they, they say when you're talking about scouts, you're not supposed to get emotional. It doesn't work for me. Um, so sorry. Um, I love these guys. And typically, and girls, because now we have girls, that's for sure. We have girls' troops, and we have girls and Cub Scouts. But what makes Boy Scouts the premier youth organization in the world? Not just in our country, but in the world. And I think now, what I believe it stems from our mission statement, um, clubs are great, sports are great, but Scouts last a lifetime. Whether you devote a year in scouting or um, I think John's in this 40 some year, I'm in 30 some years. So um, it does make a difference. Our um, mission statement is to, pre to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling in them the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. And we've come to believe that once you live the Scout Oath and Law, it changes your life forever. And I've seen that um, in many scouts that I've seen go from Cubs. Um, we had, if you are one of our, our newest Cub members who just received your Bobcat, can you stand up for me? Yeah, these guys just took their oath. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and to them it was, oh, I have to memorize these words, oh no. Um, they haven't quite started to live them yet. Uh, but you look at some of the older gentlemen and the older women and girls, and, and you know that they've lived it daily in their lives, and it, it helps them make choices that last a lifetime. Um, we do that through the aims of scouting, character development, leadership development, citizenship, and then also physical um, and mental development. We, it's just amazing, uh, the changes, and we appreciate the Methodist Church for allowing us to do that. At this time, okay, I'm going to ask you guys to get involved. If you are a scout or a Cub Scout, can you stand up for me? If you are a parent of a Cub or a Scout, can you stand up for me? Or a family member? If you have ever been involved in scouting in any capacity, maybe your children have grown, please stand up for me. Look at this. This is okay, this is where I get choked up. Um, Okay, if you've ever bought popcorn, jerky, flowers, wreaths, supported the Scouts in any way, stand on up. <laughs> tricky, tricky. I'm telling you, it does take a village, and we so appreciate all of your help and support, not only in the building, the congregation, but in monetary. We'd also like to invite you all downstairs after the service. We have a little reception for you. But at this time, I would like to invite uh, Darren Gerhardt. He is our senior patrol leader, which is the highest rank for a youth in any uh, troop. I would like Darren to come on up, and he's going to lead us in the words that we live by. Scouts, if you will stand. Glad to see you. It's been great to uh, show up on Monday night. Sometimes I got to come get something on a Monday night from the office, and it's a lively party down there, guys. I mean, just know that it's a good time, uh, or even Tuesdays as well. We uh, uh, so enjoy you all, and uh, that's a pretty good oath.
right there. There's some good words in there, isn't there? Uh, words to live by for sure. And so we're proud of you all. And we can't wait to eat some uh, cookies punch or whatever we got downstairs to celebrate the after the service here today. Well, at this time, we're going to be going to our uh, moment of prayer. And so I do want to just point your direction into our bulletin here today. Uh, there are some different prayer requests that uh, are mentioned here. But before we do that, I do want to remind you that if you have a prayer request, we have a very faithful group of prayer team warriors that pray faithfully for that. And if you just send your prayer request to prayer at groveportumc.org, we will make sure that that goes out to uh, all those prayer warriors, and we will pray for anything that you need. So uh, don't hesitate. If there's something going on in your life and you want some, some people to surround you and love and pray for you, uh, feel free to send uh, anything you need right there. You do see printed in our bulletin, as I mentioned, a bunch of different uh, prayer concerns. Of course, we do want to continue to reach out sympathies. Uh, we do, of course, want to reach out to the Summers, uh, the son-in-law whose mother recently passed away. And so we're praying uh, for, for them. We do also want to continue to pray for uh, the Nichols family and the family of Laura, Lori Bentley, Larry Bentley, that is, who recently passed away. And also as we continue to pray for the family of Sue Hawkland as well. We do uh, want to mention uh, the prayer concerns are mostly updated this week. Uh, we do just want to mention, of course, we want to pray for those affected by the earthquake that was in Turkey and Syria. Uh, every day it seems uh, just more horrible news. And, of course, we've all seen the pictures of just utter devastation. We want to pray for our, those people there. And, of course, do uh, look forward in these days ahead that I'm sure that uh, if the Methodist Church has a response, that we'll let you know about that in these days coming forward. do also want to mention to you um, that uh, we do have printed our, our list, something kind of fun. You heard that confirmation was coming up. We already have two confirmation confirmands that is signed up. So you can start praying for them. Uh, so we do want to, of course, pray for Ayub and Camilla. Uh, but uh, again, this is not a final list. If there's any others or anybody else uh, that wants to do that, you're welcome to just talk to me. We'll make sure we get you set up here in these coming days. Do you also want to mention to you uh, those at long-term care, we continue to pray for them. So we pray for Jack, Carol, Annabelle, Charlotte, Bet, and Reverend Meredith, as well as those in active military service you see printed there, Jake, Nicole, Matthew, Bishop, Brandon, Parker, Dustin, and James. Just want to finally mention that uh, the altar rails are open today, so if you want to come and meet with God in a special way, you're welcome to do that. Um, and just know that as you come, there may be some friends that come alongside, place their hand upon you, and that's just their way of letting you know you don't come to the altar alone, that we're a family here, and we're going to uplift each other to all the best that we can. So now with all that being said, let's now go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Sing with me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for your love, which is constantly always available each and every new morning. We find that even before we rise up, that you are fresh and new, that your spirit is guiding us. Lord, we thank you for that love that's constant, that mercy that's always upon us, your presence that's always walking beside us. And as we gather to be your people here again today, to not only remember the great story, not only to encourage each other, but once again to be in your presence, and to be sent out from this room to do good work, not only in this community, but throughout the world. 
God, we remember your goodness and remember your faithfulness. And Lord, throughout the years and throughout the people of God and their existence, that you have always been faithful. And even those times where hard times came, Lord, you brought people back from desolation and destruction. You brought your people through Egypt, through the Red Sea and the waters. You brought your people back from Babylon and Persia to bring back and come back and to settle in Jerusalem again. And so, God, you've worked among us yet again here today. You've established the walls. God, we celebrate you. Lord, as we hear, we remember not only these things, but we remember the work of Jesus Christ, that he came into this world, became flesh and blood, dwelt among us and taught us the ways of the kingdom. And when the time was right, he gave himself up for us, died on the cross, forgiving our sins. And yet on that third day, rose again, conquered death itself, and now holds the keys of life. And so as we hear today, Lord, we worship you because you freely offer life to all those who would put their faith and belief in you. You are a good God, a gracious God, and a loving God. Thank you for working in all of our lives. For those maybe that are here today that have never experienced that, may you once again just knock on the door of their heart. They may open it and know and fellowship with you and know this community of saints across the world and across all times. It's the best thing that's ever happened. God, we do once again remember your gift of your Holy Spirit that empowers your church, that encourages your church, that brings life to your church. And we thank you that it is alive and well here today because your spirit lives inside us. We do pray for all these prayer requests that come to you. We pray for the sick. We pray for the hurting. We pray for the lost, the lonely, the desolate. We pray for those that are hurting financially, those that are seeking jobs, those that are just bound up in all sorts of different addictions, those that are far from family, those who put their life on the line each and every night or even across the world serving our country. We pray for them. We pray for our world and its leaders, especially those that are caught up in many of the tensions we've seen on the TV. We pray, Lord, that peace would reign and that each leader would choose a way of peace that would honor all life on this earth. And God, as we hear today, we once again pray for this church. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that you would make us into being the church you want us to be, the very person you've called us to be, and that, Lord, we would so be like Jesus Christ that this world would turn towards you, and that grace and peace would abound in these lands. God, as we hear today, we pray for those that come to seek your special touch. May you be upon them. May you be upon their families. May you bless them in all that they need. That they once again can not only proclaim your goodness, that, Lord, you would work in their life, that they know that you are real and that you are here. Finally, God, we pray that prayer that marks us as your followers. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I hit you all up for some money, I just wanted to acknowledge Mrs. Dillman. She was far too modest, but uh, in Scouts, the highest honor that can be, uh, be achieved is Eagle Scout, and she is the uh, proud mother of an Eagle Scout. So congratulations to you. <laughs> now down to business. Uh, if you feel so moved to uh, help support our ministry here, there are plates in the back that you can put a donation in. You can send uh, a donation to our church here at 512 Main Street, uh, or you can use the Ezekiel app, which can be downloaded onto your phone. With that, would you please stand for the doxology? <laughs>
Dear Lord, we thank you so much for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. We know we're not deserving, but they've all come via your grace. We hope you'll accept a small portion of the blessings we're returning to you. And help us use them appropriately to meet your goals. Amen. You may be seated.
Mighty Groveport uh, Methodist Church Choir. The best Methodist choir in Groveport, I must say. Wow, I praise. <laughs> the scripture passage today comes from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him, on his right, stood Mattathiah, Shema, Anaiah, Uriah, Hokiah, and Masiah. And on his left were Pedaiah, Mishael, Malkijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing up above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. That is the word of the Lord. Up there. there we go. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning to those online. Welcome to you as well and to our worship service here today. Brad, I congratulate you on all those names. That was fantastic. We had a beautiful choir. If you missed it, you need to go back and rewind people online and go back, see our choir perform and uh, give glory to the Lord in a beautiful way as well as uh, we had some great names that were said there as Brad uh, read our scripture here today and uh, we're excited for that. Well, that's right. He's a great, yeah, great word. Yeah. Be the name of a new kid one day, right? Well, as we're here today, at church, uh, it is the end of a sermon series. Oh, oh I know. And uh, it's been a, a, a good one, I hope, for you. And I hope uh, that you've been touched in many different ways. It's, of course, as you've been with us, if you haven't been with us, we've been in the middle of a sermon series that's been very, kind of very specific to our church at the time we're in. And uh, what I mean by that is, you, uh, Tina, you got to share with the scouts that it's been kind of a rough couple of years for you all. It's also been like that in the Methodist Church, too, as uh, you probably have heard some about that as well. But we are coming out, we are at a point where we have direction, and we're coming out uh, and coming to this conclusion of the sermon series here today. I do want to mention to you, uh, as we're here today, that um, I'm just really excited about some cookies and things afterwards. So uh, I do want to just remind you once again that we're going to have a good fellowship with the scouts after this, but let's pray together. Lord, may the words of our mouth, my mouth that is, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we've been looking at this book of Nehemiah, which is a great, awesome book in the Old Testament. It's a story of the people of God when Jerusalem had been conquered and destroyed and all the people were even brought out in chains and taken to other foreign lands, forced to settle there. And then years later, actually the empire that conquered them actually gets conquered itself, those same people end up now not in Babylon, but in Persia. And the Persian Empire now is coming back. And one of them has taken this great step, Nehemiah that is, to go back and to say, you know what, we're going to rebuild Jerusalem. And we looked at just kind of this idea that, you know, when he heard about how bad things were in Jerusalem, even though he was the cupbearer to the Persian king, that he took time to grieve. We looked at that in week one. And we looked at how there's appropriate time to take time to grieve before acting. We looked at the second time where at some point he just risked himself. He actually went before the king in a very bold fashion and asked the king, I need to get this done. Send me. And the king, because he had a plan, sent him. And so we talked about the idea that sometimes to make good choices, to rebuild things, to do good things in life, you have to risk oneself, including your position, even your life sometimes, to make sure good things are done. We looked at the idea that three, week three, that you know, when he asked the king, the king had you know, questions for him. And he was ready to answer, right? And so there was an attitude of 
You have to be ready for the moment. You have to be prepared before that moment comes, and you put on that risk. And we looked at that in week three. And then last week, we looked at the idea that any time you try to do good, there's always opposition. And there's ideas of how Nehemiah and the Israelites, when they came back to rebuild Jerusalem, they felt all sorts of opposition from all sorts of angles and how they dealt with each and every type of opposition that they faced. We looked at that last week. And then, of course, we have today, which as you see up on the screen, the title of this sermon series is not The Rebuilding of the Wall, Part 5, called A Rebuilt Wall, to finish us off. Because we looked at the idea of that, the reason why they built the wall, of course, and it even says here in Scripture that the houses were still destroyed in the city. But there's now a wall around a whole bunch of destroyed houses. We looked at that idea of how the wall had to come first for the people to have safety, to live and thrive again. And so that wall was built first. Well, as we're here today, I want to just share with you a couple different thoughts of this story and how it keeps going. We read just a minute ago how... Nehemiah and all the people gather. There's an assembly that's called, and you know the wall is now done, and so the assembly is called. It actually says that the people go out and kind of go back to their villages. And so even though there's not many living in Jerusalem itself, because, again, most of the houses are still destroyed, they go back to their kind of surrounding villages and the places they're living, and then Nehemiah calls them out and says, we're going to have an assembly. And so they come together to have an assembly before the Lord. And as they come together, Ezra, who's kind of the main priest at the time, comes out and reads the book of Moses. Now, if you ever wondered what book that was, it's, it's one of the first five books. It's probably the book of Deuteronomy, though, is the one they chose. Is the one that oftentimes is referred to in that sense. And so they came out and they started reading from the book of the law. And it says from sunup till noon, right? Which back then was basically saying six hours. And so for six hours, the men and women of Israel, it says, stood on their feet and listened to the words. And then it says, as Ezra read from the law, that some of the other Levites, they came around and because... You know, if you kind of think of what's happened at this time, not everybody's speaking Hebrew, really. They're actually speaking the lingua franca of the day, which is Aramaic. And so what I think it's, it means when they said they came out and expressed and explained what Ezra was reading is that they actually interpreted it in Aramaic so that the people could hear. And guess what happens when the people heard what happened or what was said in the word? It does say that they got down and they worshiped and they bowed down low and all those things, but it says in Scripture the Nehemiah gathered up all the Levites and all the Israelites and all the people and all the leaders and priests, and he said, hey, go around and tell all the people these words, right? And I just want to read them to you what happened that day when the law was read before them. It says that after Ezra opened the book, you know, the, all the people could see him because he was standing above as we read just before. But then you get a little bit down, and Nehemiah says this in verse 9. The Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest, and the scribe, the Levites, and those that were instructed the people said to them all, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people have been weeping as they listen to the words of the law. In other words, for the first time in a very, very long time, the people of God got together, the words were read, and there was a sense of conviction on their hearts, and they realized in the ways that their ancestors and them had failed God, and yet, Nehemiah says, no, 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 (laughs) right? And Ezra says, absolutely not. This is not about you, O people, and how you feel in this moment. This is about God's work in this moment. And they were there, of course, to start remembering the wall and and to think about what God had done. He called this assembly to to once again sort of look at the wall and sort of look at Jerusalem and to actually have people cast lots to determine who would come back and actually live in the city and actually rebuild in the city. And it says on that day, he reminds them that, no, 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 this is a sacred day. And then he goes on to say, not only don't weep, but he goes on to say this, Nehemiah said to them, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord our God. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. These verses are, of course, extremely powerful for maybe where we are in many different ways. As you know, uh, many of you know, we had a meeting yesterday. I know, it was really exciting. You guys really pumped up. We had a meeting yesterday, and uh, uh, I've got to be honest with you, as a pastor, I'm always a little worried about meetings like that, but it honestly went as, I was floored. I called my wife afterwards, and I was like, I, like that was great. Like, it, I don't think it could have gone any better, honestly, from my point of view. And we uh, rebuilt the wall, and we've been talking about this idea that as a church, you have to actually put some structures into place before you can go and do the ministry and do all the things that God's called you to do to be the people of God. There's some structural things that are good to have in place because they protect 
the church. They keep sort of the opposition out. They sort of keep everything flowing on track and to make sure the ministries of the church don't get derailed. And we actually, yesterday, populated. We were kind of pulled the church together, had a nomination committee meeting. And it was the whole church together for all those that were here. And we actually populated a bunch of the different committees that are needed for a church to run. And if you were asking me, you know, or anybody, I think maybe a few weeks ago, it'd be the question of, could we do it? Right? And we didn't know, right? Well, okay, well, we knew then. Okay, well, some people knew, right? Some people knew. So, you know, some of us needed, you know, we're waiting to see. And then as we got there yesterday, I just want to share with you the wall that was built, right? So just to let you know, this is kind of also a presentation of now we have an official list of 2023 nominations and, and those that are officially going to be leading in our church, so you know who to go and to talk to. We have our lay leaders that are going to be co-lay leaders, Gary Hinkle and Tim Stauffer. We have our lay delegate that's been elected, Brad Lewis, as well as an alternate, Mike Aldridge. If you want to keep on going, uh, we're just going to run through these, uh, my AV team. We also have the Staff Parish Relations Committee. You can see that they're actually decided to do co-chairs on all these committees instead of having a chair and a vice chair. We had Elaine Lewis and Jeannie Hinkle, Joyce Galbraith, Ricky Meredith, Susan Stauffer, Susan Bropes, Becky Cassidy, Steve Shirley, and Jen Hurdle as well. And we need to keep on going. We had our trustees, the co-chairs again, Mike Sisko and David Bropes. Congratulations. David, you're here. So I saw you earlier. I don't know where you went right now, but you're here somewhere. And uh, uh, we, we nominated you. Uh, Mark Salva, Jason Cordell, Susie Butch, and I, Susie, I think I misspelled it. I had a typo on your name there. I apologize for that. But uh, Wayne Cassidy, Joe Nichols, Margie Hamler, and Kelly Sisko. And then also, we also looked up, we had our finance committee. We had co-chairs Ron Lee, Andrew, Andrew Nimley, Brad Lewis, Wayne Cassidy, Vicki Babbert. You'll notice there's an asterisk next to Dave Hurdle, and that's because uh, he's not in the country right now. So I can't really ask him because we, we made, uh, he didn't actually necessarily tell me he was available, but I think he will be, and it's just a matter of uh, being able to ask him at some point. So we'll see uh, if he says yes or no. And then finally, we had a nominations committee, actually nominate a nominations committee, if you will, and Susan Arnett, Angela Martin, Christy Nichols, Beth Cordell, and Karen Fluharty. Here's the thing, that might not sound like a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Did you see how many different names were on there? It's not like five people were on every committee, right? <laughs> we kept doing it over and over again. As your pastor has to say, a wall was built yesterday, right? And I don't think it was necessarily our hands alone that did it. I think God's hand was in it to make sure that this church will have life and beauty in these days ahead and to do amazing things. And church, I would share with you, I know maybe we're all in different stages of grief and maybe some people are joyous, some people are in shades of mourning, but today, Today, it's not about how we feel like the Israelites did that day. It's about to recognize the moment what God has done. God's built a wall around this church. You saw it with your own eyes yesterday, if you were here. You saw it today in the presentation that there's still a group of people in this church that are committed, willing to risk it all that are ready, that are going to face opposition, but they're going to keep on going, that are people that are saying, this is what God wants this, this community to have, and we're going to be part of it. We're going to build it up. It's a day to celebrate the Lord our God and what he did. Of course, the question is, of course, now, what do you do from here? you got a wall built, right? And just like Nehemiah in those days, you know, he looked around and he saw that Israel, the Jerusalem that was, was kind of empty, right? And some people were living there, but a whole bunch weren't, weren't. And so there was a whole system that they set up. But what they did, before they did anything, before we were building houses or doing a bunch of different things or even building the temple again and doing all those different stuff, they did this, it says. It says they got out the second day. So the first day was that day where they were told not to weep and they had a feast and a festival together. The second day, the words came out and they did the same thing. They read from the law. And when they did, it says here in that same chapter, verse, chapter 8 and verse 14, they found written in the law what the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites, and I love this, if you just think about what's being said here, the Israelites were to live in booths during the feast of the seventh month. And as they read this, it's which month? The seventh month. Now, remember, the feast of the booths was this idea, is that when the Israelites were traveling through and wandering through the land of Canaan, right, and they were wandering through and trying to get to the promised land, if you will, and to come out of exile, it says there that the, one of the things they were supposed to do is have this festival, not only the Passover, but the booths, and the booths were this idea is that what Jerusalem would do before it was destroyed, there was a festival that would happen, and everybody would come up to Jerusalem, and they would go cut branches and get palm leaves and all sorts of stuff, and they would make basically tents, 
right? You guys, I know I'm talking your language right here, right now, over here, right? They basically made tents out of leaves and sticks, right? I mean, it sounds kind of familiar, right? Maybe we need to have a festival booth some week here in the church and have you guys set it up for us. But uh, they literally did this, and they lived there for like a week, right? In other words, they didn't have all their normal stuff and all their things at home and all these different stuff. They lived there for a week. They had a festival there, and it was to commemorate every year the idea that the Lord had brought them wandering through the desert to remember what their people had gone through that God was still faithful and had brought them. And so they hear these words again told that this is what they're supposed to do as Israelites to do this. And so it says that they should proclaim this word and spread it throughout the towns in Jerusalem. They said, go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees and myrtles and palms and shade trees and make booths as it is written. And here, church, what happens? So the people went out, they brought back the branches and they built themselves booths on their own roofs and in their courtyards and in the courts of the house of the God and by the square of the water gate and the one gate of the Ephraim. And the whole company that had returned from exile built booths and lived in them. And then hear these words. From the days of Joshua, which was a whole long time before this, son of Nun, until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated like this. And their joy was very great. In other words, what did the first people of God, when they came back and rebuilt Jerusalem, and they had the wall, but their houses weren't built, what did the first thing they do? They did the very thing God had told them to do. Go, be with each other. Sit and remember. And it said when they did that, their joy was very great. You know, God calls the church to do many different things, but... One of the things that God calls us to do is not only be outward focused and do missions and do all those different things, God also calls us to fellowship. And I think if you wanted my two cents on what this next season should be, it should be the idea of coming together, of fellowshipping with each other, of finding a season of joy. It's sort of like a lot of times in leadership you hear this term. Have you ever heard the term sharpen the saw? And for my scout troop, you probably have heard this before, but I want to share it to you again. It's this idea is that and at this point, no one even knows who I think to give tribute to the original person, but it was this idea is that if you're out and you're cutting logs, right, and you're going, the, like, if you have the big, like, lumberjack people, right, you have the saw, right, the big, huge one, and there's one person on one side, one person on the other, and they're sawing the log, right, and you're going through a log, at some point, it gets dull, and you can sit there, and you can work harder and harder, or you can stop, go sharpen the saw, and come back. And the truth is, if you compare those two things, which one is more productive? The irony is the people that took it easier, that did less work, were more productive, right? And actually got the job done more. Well, so likewise, church, it is with fellowship in the church and doing missions and work in the community. I believe it's time to sharpen the saw. Have this season focus inward on ourselves, not for ourselves, but to focus inward, to find that joy of the Lord once again. I was talking with Jen Hurdle this past week. She has a passion for this. And if you have a passion for it too, I want you to come and talk with Jen and I. Because we're going to set some events up. For the church to have some good times. You want some potlucks? We're, you know, we're Methodist Church. We do some potlucks. Expect some potlucks coming down the road here. You know what I'm saying, church, right? You want some sing-alongs to shout and just have fun for the joy of the Lord tonight? We haven't talked to you, but we're going to do some sing-alongs, right? We're going we're to do some of these things to once again... Be filled and to stop just like the people as Israel did, to stop and remember that the joy of the Lord may be ours. Let us pray. Lord, as we're here today, we thank you once again for this great testimony that Nehemiah left us and how the people of God, they went through rough times for sure, but you were never done with them. And because of what Nehemiah and those other Israelites and Ezra and everybody else did those days, one day Jesus Christ came to this world in that same city that was rebuilt, Jesus Christ died for us. But on that night in which he was betrayed, in which he gave himself up, before he died for us, he met on that night of that Passover with his disciples in the upper room. He took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my new covenant, 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, in remembering these acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to you in union with Christ's offering for us. We pray, Lord, that you would be upon these gifts, that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ, that in taking them we would be the body of Christ, broken for you and given to all the world. Lord, we praise your name, and we praise the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to you, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite those that are helping with communion to come forward at this time. As they do, I just want to mention to all our visitors here, and for those that are maybe with us for the first time, that uh, when we take communion here, it's an open table, and what we mean by that is you don't have to be a member of our church, you don't have to be a member of our denomination. If you want to meet with Jesus, you're welcome to do that in simple ways of taking bread and juice here. What we'll do is we'll have, a, uh, just simply come up, there'll be a, a, a loaf of bread, you'll just rip off a piece of that, dip it into the cup, and then you'll just take the communion that way. We also do have, if you prefer, there's some prepackaged elements up here that are just kind of wafers and juice. If you'd rather have that, you're welcome to take one of these as well. We'll simply uh, be starting up in the balcony and in the back, and then we'll kind of move forward and then just return to your seats uh, at that time. Let us now prepare the table. The table is prepared. Will you come?
as you're able for our closing hymn, this is a favorite of a lot of people, Blessed Assurance. Bible thumping now. Watch out. Watch out. Like yeah, hey, that is a good one. It is a good one. We do like that one. Well, thank you for being worship with us here again today. Thank you, Scouts, for being part of the day. Again, there's a celebration downstairs. Come celebrate with us. For those online, thank you for being with us again. And as we go, let's remind ourselves these words that were kind of the culmination of Nehemiah and the efforts of the Israelites. The whole company that returned from the exile built booths and lived in them. In the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until the day the Israelites had not celebrated like this, and their joy was great. May the Lord release each and every single one of us here in this room. Be for our community, filled with joy, gift of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.